So when my dad was growing up, they didn't have a lot of extra money. In fact, there were some Christmases where they didn't get any Christmas gifts at all. However, this recipe was almost as good as a gift and he still to this day when he talks about it, his eyes light up and he said he always knew it was going to be a special day when they would wake up and mom, which is my grandma, would have chocolate gravy ready and served for breakfast because it didn't happen very often. And unfortunately, I didn't actually get my grandma's recipe for chocolate gravy. But my dad talked about it. My mom didn't have a recipe for chocolate gravy. She'd never heard of chocolate gravy before, but my dad would talk about it on and off for years. And so I finally found an old cookbook from the 1930s and it had some recipes for, basically it's a thin chocolate pudding, but chocolate gravy. So with a really good friend of mine who happens to be an expert, expert, not accept, expert cook and baker, we sat down and formulated this recipe for chocolate gravy. And I didn't tell my dad about it. And when they came down for Christmas morning, this has been years back, I surprised him with a big old dish of chocolate gravy over biscuits. And I'm not sure which one of us was more excited or found it more special. So if you have my book handmade, then you already have this recipe. It is on page 196, but I'm gonna share it with you today. If you wanna have the printable version of this in order to make it for your family, which I surely hope that you do, we'll have the link below. You can hop over to my website and there will be a printable button there where you can print it out. But we're gonna get started with our chocolate gravy recipe. So first up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have your butter beginning to melt in a saucepan. So we've already got that going. It's a quarter cup butter. And this is the uh, European butter from Azure Standard. This video is sponsored by Azure. And actually quite a few of the ingredients are from Azure. A lot of people think of Azure as more dry goods and buying in bulk, but they do have perishable fruits vegetables and milk. So my butter is from them because my milk cow Clover is actually dry right now because she is due to calve actually on Christmas day. So we'll see if she comes in a little bit before then, but that means I'm in the dry spell as far as milk goes right now and butter. And actually at the time of this recording, we've had some trouble getting milk being stock at our regular grocery store. So this is from Azure Standard and this is A2A2 milk powder, whole milk that I had gotten to have on hand for making up my own homemade chocolate, mix, uh, chocolate hot cocoa mixes. There, we'll have a link below the video for that as well. Um, and just to have as a backup, which came in very handy because I did not have any milk on hand. And so we uh, mixed this up, reincorporated it. So I've got a cup of milk right here. And then you're gonna wanna have your cocoa powder, vanilla extract, sugar, salt, and boiling water ready to go on the kettle. So this is a really simple recipe actually, it comes together really fast, which is great. And for, this is my bulk of cocoa powder. I usually buy it in the five pound bags and then I just refill my little canister here. And this of course I get from Azure, as well as the vanilla beans to make my homemade vanilla extract, which we've got a tutorial and video on that and you can find all of that beneath the video. And we also have a coupon code so it gets you 10% off if you are a new customer, your first $50 or more order. We'll make sure that that's below too. All right, let's get to this recipe. So we're gonna melt a quarter cup of butter in our saucepan, and then you're going to whisk in a tablespoon of flour. So you'll see this is the beginning of a lot of gravies, a lot of different sauces, and so our butter is melted and we're just gonna whisk that in and we're just gonna let that brown a little bit okay so up next we are going to take a half cup sugar and a half a teaspoon salt now if your butter is salted cut this down in half on the amount of salt to just a quarter teaspoon and we're just gonna sprinkle that and we're gonna stir in our sugar you want to make sure that you stir that in pretty quick so that it doesn't burn and then we're gonna add in a half a cup of our cocoa powder. Now, of course, when my grandma made this, this was always on the wood stove. And I have not actually made it on the wood stove. It's a little bit harder 
with the way our wood stove works to get the temperature just right. And I'm always nervous I don't ever want to scorch the sugar. Okay, so now we are going to add our milk and our boiling water. So I have the water here in the kettle. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. My kettle, I should specify. And we want three quarters cup of the boiling water or just off the boil water. And we're just gonna whisk that in. And then the same thing, we're gonna whisk in our milk. Now the key is to just let this, with that cooler milk, is to just let this come up and get nice and hot. You don't wanna actually let it boil like you would with a pudding. If you let it get to a boil point like you would with pudding, then it's gonna get thick like pudding. And we want this to be thinner than pudding so that it's more like a chocolate sauce versus a chocolate pudding. So you'll just kinda keep incorporating that and you'll feel it with the whisk begin to thicken up. So it's probably hard to see, but you definitely can feel, especially at the bottom portion of the pot, I can feel that it's getting thicker. So as soon as you start to see just a couple of bubbles, don't let it come to a full boil, but just hit the simmer point, then you're gonna wanna remove that off of heat. And now we're going to add our vanilla, which is just half a teaspoon of vanilla. And if you saw my video on how to make homemade vanilla extract, you will recognize this from a couple of months ago. And we're just now gonna get in here and grab half a teaspoon. All right, so we're gonna let that cool down just a little bit and get our biscuit ready. So you wanna let your gravy cool just enough so that it can thicken up a little bit, but you definitely want to eat this while the chocolate gravy is still warm. So for this biscuit recipe, this is a flaky buttermilk melt in your mouth biscuit. And you can grab the tutorial and the recipe, we'll link that video to this one in the video description. And my grandma, when she made biscuits, I have not, gotten to be this expert of a biscuit maker yet, but my grandma would literally just open up the flour sack and she would mix her biscuit dough right in the bag of the flour. Uh, my dad tells wonderful stories of that. I have myself, however, have not gotten to be quite that level. So we are going to look at that. Oh, I tell you what, it's a hard thing to beat having this for breakfast. Probably a good thing we only do it on special occasions. I am in no way, shape or form trying to say this is healthy, but I tell you what, it's one of the best things you'll ever have. I think this means I need to take a plate down to my dad. Otherwise, I might end up eating the entire pot by myself because the kids aren't home from school yet. One of the really great things about this, even though we're calling it chocolate gravy, which it 100% is, it's not super sweet. It has just the right balance of sweetness and with the butter that you get in the sauce, plus the butter from the biscuits. It would be really phenomenal as well on pancakes or waffles. So when you're making it, don't think like that super sweet like you get with a chocolate pie or even like hot chocolate. It doesn't have anywhere that amount of sweetness. It's just the perfect hint. 